Hi everyone, uh, welcome to SAS TV. In this episode, I interview Shritan Sundar Rajan, uh, venture partner at Evion VC, uh, one of India's premier and oldest VC firms. We interview Shrikan to understand a little more about uh, the firm, its investment thesis, and its B2B SaaS portfolio. We also ask Shrikan a whole bunch of questions that our eager uh, entrepreneur community has, has passed on to us uh, to get wisdom and guidance from Shrikan on how to launch and successfully grow SaaS startups in India. Hi Shrikan, uh, uh, welcome to SaaS TV and uh, thanks for giving us your time. Uh, let's begin the, uh, the Q&A by uh, getting to know, know a little more about Helion uh, and its investment thesis in India, uh, sure. especially on, on the enterprise uh, and the enterprise SaaS space. Sure. Uh, so Helion is a, a fairly uh, early entrant into the uh, VC scene. Uh, they've been around since 2006. Uh, we have about 600 million uh, under management right now across three funds. And definitely uh, both consumer tech and enterprise tech has been the focus area. And off late we've actually kind of started focusing on some really interesting SaaS companies. Okay. Uh, one of them is Pipemore, the other one is uh, Botfix. Uh, we have another uh, SaaS play on the uh, B2B play called Mo Engage. Uh, so all these companies um, have a bright future and uh, a lot of good things uh, are slated out of them. Okay. Uh, and and the, some of the, some of the SaaS companies that you just mentioned uh, in your portfolio, uh, are they uh, India focused? Uh, is there a geographical focus in terms of India, uh, global markets, and uh, what are the you know, core areas of, of business? So if you look at uh, PipeMock, they are basically a lightweight EAI uh, integration play on the cloud. Okay. So any kind of traditional SaaS products need to be all integrated together in case you want to run a. Soho or an SME office on the cloud, okay. you probably need a CRM which is SaaS based, you'll need basically an accounting software, you'll need right. a customer support like right. a Freshdesk or a Zendesk. These guys actually kind of connect everything together. Okay. So it is a global problem. Okay. What fix is essentially a, a do-it-yourself uh, guide kind of a thing because okay. as things start to get more and more complex, right. uh, you need things to be simplified and, right. and uh, this is a SaaS based, uh, studio based approach which allows you to animate uh, mm -hmm. any kind of site. Uh, especially okay. if it's a complex website so that people can start to use things and onboard their customers a lot okay. faster. Got it. And then more engages again, uh, it's more customer engagement management okay. on the mobile channel okay. uh, where they have an SDK which actually kind of uh, can be compiled in, in context of your APK or application and it kind of uh, traps events of interest, collects that and actually provides feedback to the uh, end customer which is a business to see how well people are using their mobile apps. And, and, and what stage uh, are these companies in? Are they? All of them are reasonably early stage. Uh, okay. So we've actually gone in much earlier because uh, in our opinion, when you look at SaaS plays, uh, it's better to get there early yep. and better to focus them very quickly on essentially global relationships so that we can start to see traction right. before it becomes too late. Right. We also have another uh, more established uh, a SaaS B2B kind of play called Seclore, which is in the data leakage prevention space. So they've actually made the transition and are doing fairly well in the US. Nice. Uh, so when you select a, a SaaS startup, uh, what are your uh, selection criteria? I mean, how, how early do you get in and what are the key aspects that you look for in, in that idea or founder or, or startup? So typically, um, what we look for is it should be a pain point. Uh, it should be a global play. And the entrepreneurs should have had some experience in terms of selling to businesses okay. uh, as opposed to just like uh, it's a consumer tech idea, you right. woke up one morning and it yeah. happened. Because there has to be some degree of maturity. Sure. Uh, ideally it comes from working for enterprise companies for yeah. a while. Yeah. And whether it's like uh, the business side of things or enterprise infra side of things, that uh, amount of insight and pain should be understood in terms of how sure. do you kind of conquer the market. So that's one. Okay. The second thing is uh, to answer your question is how early do we go? I think if everything aligns, we'd rather go in earlier, as okay. I told you, as opposed to later. Right. 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 Sure. Uh, so I'm sure you get a lot of lot of applications, a lot of deal flow. Uh, what are some of the emerging uh, SaaS trends that you're seeing in India, other than 
I mean, we hear about marketing tech, sales automation, HR, and stuff like that. Are you seeing uh, vertical SaaS? Uh, are you seeing, yeah, we're seeing a SME lot of, SaaS? Yes. Uh, I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of differentiated plays now. Okay. For example, uh, sales enablement uh, mm-hmm. by vertical is again becoming very, very okay. critical. Uh, analytics by vertical, whether it's insurance or healthcare, is becoming very, very critical. Uh, healthcare plays, manufacturing plays, uh, supply chain side, I mean, in terms of bringing in more efficiencies, uh, maybe even like platforms to enable uh, better transportation and logistics. Okay. Uh, so, there's, uh, especially when you kind of combine uh, the kind of uh, devices from an IoT perspective, which are there, sure. open standards, you'll start to see much more interesting plays evolve and, and these are generally global problems. Solve yeah. it in India, yeah. it's applicable anyway. Yeah. Uh, the, the other interesting space uh, we're seeing that you know, a lot of startups are beginning to address is uh, the huge underserved SME market, uh, which is ripe for uh, you know, SaaS and cloud, uh, because they don't have a legacy uh, in the sense that there's no great transition. Uh, but it's an extremely tough business to, you know, a business problem in the sense that access to SMEs and how do you uh, market to them, how do you sell sell to them in a cost-effective manner, etc. Uh, are some of your portfolio companies focused on SMEs, and uh, you know, so are they? How are they overcoming some of these challenges? So not uh, other than probably uh, Pipe Monk, which is actually focused on SMEs. Okay. Uh, both Wattfix, Seclor, as well as More Engage would probably be focusing on the larger okay. uh, uh, businesses. Okay. Um, I think the challenge here is to reach the SMEs. It has to be a very painless process, right? Yeah. So if you have a very painful product, even though you call it SaaS, and it takes about one month to onboard someone, that is not going to work. Yeah. It has to be essentially a good, good, good example of this is uh, fresh test, yeah. uh, which takes a few hours to set up and get go. Yeah. And if you can actually do that, whether it's like solving a supply chain problem for the SME or whether it's actually um, helping them with sales enablement or helping them become a little bit more operationally efficient or whatever, it has to be painless. And that's very critical. And, and this, this is why I think in the context, I mean, while people talk about UI, UX, and product management on the B2C plays, right. it's equally important here, and in fact, more important. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, what are the biggest differences you see uh, between the, the highly matured uh, the US market, which is the largest market for SaaS, and and the Indian uh, you know market for for SaaS? Because you know we're still new, we're nascent. Um, Though, you know, we do know that uh, Indian SaaS startups like Zoho and Freshdesk, Capillary, Fusion Charts, they've all gone global very quickly. But uh, do you still see, you know, big differences in, in the way SaaS companies have started off at scale uh, between the US and, and, and India? So I think the investor appreciation in, in the US is a little bit more mature. Okay. Uh, the investor appreciation for SaaS is a little slower here because everyone is caught up in the consumer tech companies. Yes, yes. And that's obvious because uh, those things were moving at a much faster pace. This requires a little bit more patience. It requires a little bit more curation. It may require working very, very deeply with potential partners who can actually help these companies establish footholds. And typically, if you look at a SaaS company in the US, they will have this in the form of an advisory board and really good senior leadership and the investors coming in and helping out. Uh, That ecosystem is there here, but it's not like kind of... uh, come together really well. Okay. So I'm hoping that uh, uh, initiatives like Amplify help provide uh, these early stage companies with that platform because it's very, very critical. Uh, so uh, for you know, viewers of, of the, uh, our, our, our channel, uh, which are typically either aspiring entrepreneurs or current SaaS entrepreneurs who have just started off on their journey, uh, what are the some of, what are some of the key points to consider for a SaaS founder who's based in India, but with global aspirations or a global product? So, I mean, same mantra holds true, right? Uh, you have to think big, but act very practically and small so that you can actually test things out. India is a reasonably good backyard to test a few things out. Of course, it's not the easiest place to sell right. uh, because the uh, businesses themselves are a little bit penny-wise pound foolish and yeah. you know, go through that. But at least if you establish a beachhead, I mean, there are some great companies. We have 
uh, Viomo, who's doing field, uh, field force automation. We have a Spurs, who's got 70 customers here. So they've actually gone through that and a half. We have uh, essentially a very cool agrotech company out of uh, IIT Madras called Airwood. Agrotech? Uh, agrotech, wow. which is also a SaaS play because they're actually wow. selling to small farmers. Wow. And they're using uh, sensors, drones, soil analytics to really help. So, I mean, I think you have the potential to try out all these things before you actually and all of these are global problems, whether yeah. you like it or not. Yeah. Farmers, absolutely. Very interesting. Uh, I mean, one thing that, that uh, sometimes even confuses me is, is the number of SaaS metrics and formulae that, 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 that are currently in, in use. Uh, you know, for young founders, especially people with no finance background uh, or leadership background, uh, how does someone uh, who's 26, 27 has a great idea either is a great sales guy or a great tech guy, how do he get himself acquainted with these kind of uh, you know, metrics and formulae? So actually, one good thing is a lot of this information, at least from a reference perspective, is available yeah. on the web. Yeah. You've seen certain successful companies in the US. You can use that as a benchmark sure. to see how they're progressing. And typically, there'll be a one to three compression ratio when you're trying to kind of set up a pricing here. Yeah. And the other thing is like, I mean, even though you call it SaaS, you have to sell a yearly contract here because uh, you cannot just swipe your credit card and, and charge it on a auto billing because that's Absolutely. not allowed in India, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So I would suggest like uh, don't get too carried away with uh, pe- people asking you all these metrics because right. at the end of the day, it's like meaningless. There are only few metrics. Yeah. One is basically are the customers uh, scaling up. Uh, is your annual recurring revenue going up? Yeah. Uh, are you getting renewals from your customers on a yearly basis? Right. Basic stuff. Yeah. And uh, obviously do your price sensitivity to an extent so that you are heading towards profitability. Sure. Uh, I think all those, those are the four things. I mean, I mean, having been an entrepreneur, right. I mean, I don't kind of uh, subscribe to all these metrics myself. Right. I mean, as long as I'm making money yeah, and I'm selling to good customers and, and they swore by us, that was good enough. Excellent. Yeah, that's good to hear. I'm sure uh, the startups that are going to watch this will uh, will sort of breathe easy now. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so between uh, again uh, coming back to uh, you know the valuations uh, for SaaS companies, uh, what what valuations are you seeing currently uh, with respect to uh, where India in, between India and the US, for example? Uh, so how does a startup founder with you know when they go out to pitch, how do they sort of prepare themselves? So actually the tipping point where like the valuations start to go up is usually if they hit like a 10 mil ARR. So then they start to command uh, price premiums at at least 15x that or 20x that, right? Wow. Um, I mean, if you look at like, I, I don't know what uh, Salesforce's uh, market cap is, but I think they are about 2 billion in yeah, revenue. Yeah. But they may be around 20 billion yeah. plus in market cap so that's when you start to get that Be- below that I think you probably will be more in the 5 to 6x range okay. and India will be probably uh, towards the lower end of that okay. so I would again uh, encourage uh, entrepreneurs not to get like see this is a problem with the uh, overheated market right everyone wants a valuation yes the valuation is only as good yeah. as today Absolutely. anything can happen but if you build a strong business yes. it's going to go on yeah. and that's a critical thing right so I guess even 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 if you're an idea stage company, your major focus should be just building. See, if you're business. yeah exactly if you're in the enterprise SaaS play, get your customers, yeah. make sure that you've done your math right on uh, economics at least pricing. Right. Make sure you're heading towards profitability in a reasonable time frame. Right. Okay. So uh, the funding uh, environment. You think is is now picking up in the sense that uh, you know people with idea stage can get angel funding, people with a prototype or an MVP can sort of get a little bit of seed money or yes. You know. So do you think that that's maturing now uh, across the value chain from uh, seed money to Series A, Series B? Yes, it is actually. If I look at uh, essentially the angel and seed uh, activity, quite a few B two B play SaaS plays are emerging, which is very very encouraging. We also are seeing uh, a lot of the uh, uh, infrastructure providers like the Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, the IBMs of the world, uh, Microsofts of the world also encouraging these kind of plays. So I see a lot of that in in their uh, startup outreach program, at least in terms of companies. 
and so I think that will continue, which is very very good. Uh, maybe there are a handful of series that have happened before because of obviously the focus was somewhere else. Right. But now you'll see a lot more of that happen. Okay. And uh, again, these are companies in the pipeline. You'll start to see uh, and hear a little bit more about. Right. Um, series B is a very very early to comment, right. especially if you're a global player. Yeah. I think you should probably. I mean, this is something which I would kind of. Uh, encourage all the uh, entrepreneurs, at least in the SaaS context, mm -hmm. is at the Series A stage, at Series B stage, it's good to get a couple more investors who are actually from the geo where you want to actually go make an impact. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a fabulous advice. So yeah, I think uh, we, we've got uh, a lot of wisdom and knowledge from, from this uh, talk and uh, we'd love to come back to you and, and uh, do another round, uh, possibly get a little more in depth into into building a business. Uh, sure. So thanks for your time. And, Thank you. Uh, look forward to seeing you again. Yeah. And I wish Amplify and the Amplify team all the best. Thank you so much. I mean, this this thing is much required, as I said. Thank you so much. Thank you.